Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Today, my friends, we jump back into our time machines. If you haven't built one by now, you're a sucker. And travel back to the 1990s once more because we are not quite done with the decade. After the video I did covering the elements that make 90 sci-fi films great, a bunch of y'all asked for a more conventional ranked list on the decade's best science fiction films. So while I write up my next Expanse character breakdown, I figure, why not? Let's pick winners and losers. To be honest, I can't say that I picked the entries on the list sans any sort of bias. My personal preferences did influence me a bit, but overall I think I did a good job of selecting and ordering the films in a way that will beget widespread agreement. Plus, I did consult Yoda on the list, who appeared in my room during the second month of quarantine, and has been talking to me ever since. Great guy, but I mean, he wanted to put Lawnmower Man 2 beyond cyberspace in the top five. And I just can't do that. Guy is obsessed with that film. And he's a hell of a pervert. Anyway, on to our list of 20. At number 20, we begin with 1997's Alien Resurrection. People have a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to the Alien movies, not made by Ridley Scott or James Cameron. But then why is it that even in the present, sometimes I prefer to watch the sequels over the original two films? Don't get me wrong, both Alien and Aliens are far superior works of art. But there is just a simple fun, and I suppose so too a gruesomeness to the sequels, that is admittedly addicting, kind of along the lines of the Saw franchise. Resurrection itself stands out in the Alien series in a couple of ways. First, it's set much further into the future than the first three films, which necessitates more advanced technology. And secondly, this film was the first to really experiment with the xenomorph form, with the introduction of the newborn, and left us with one of the most memorable movie deaths of all time. As a friend of mine often says, a bitch, decompression is... At number 19, we have The Iron Giant. I feel like a lot of people are going to want this film rated higher, but I want to be clear. For this list, I had to apply a higher standard to animated films. There's just so much animated sci-fi out there, and the medium allows for limitless possibilities. The Iron Giant juxtaposes an advanced alien robot with a simple 1950s American town devoid of any sort of futuristic technology. For a movie marketed to children, its story tackles some very complex themes about the nature of humanity and existence. However, what makes the film most special is the touching relationship that develops between child and robot. On second thought, that actually sounds pretty weird. Maybe the government was right. At number 18, and this is going to be my first heresy, we have Alien 3. A lot of people are not fans of this movie, and I know some of you are going to say that Resurrection is better. I think each film has its pros and cons, but sorry, I'm just a sucker for dark science fiction movies set in prison. I do think the filmmakers could have done a lot more with the premise, but I appreciate the film for what it is. The movie had that hopeless dystopian feel that was so characteristic of the best 90s sci-fi. At number 17, we have one of my personal favorites, Soldier. Much of the conversation about 90 sci-fi action films surrounds Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sly Stallone. But Kurt Russell, to me, is right there in the conversation for best sci-fi action star of the decade. 1994 Stargate almost made this list as well. Soldier, however, was his best film in the genre. Sergeant Todd 3465 was Master Chief before Master Chief ever existed, and the harsh and brutal training of child recruits in order to cultivate an army of super soldiers is reminiscent of the Halo backstory and the inception of the Spartan programs. At number 16, I have to go with 1994's Time Cop. The movie was a little corny and roundhousey, but that's the way I like my Jean-Claude Van Damme. And as a major fan of sci-fi action martial arts films on their own, for me, this film is special for blending the two genres together. We just don't get enough of such films, at least not ones that star actual martial artists. And it wasn't until 2001 that Time Cop was finally matched by Jet Li's The One. Anyway though, fantastic hair, high leg kicks, and time travel. They just go together like Tabasco sauce and pizza. At number 15, we have 1995's Ghost in the Shell. The movie is weird, confusing, and somehow fairly profound. You go in for the futuristic Japanese setting and the suggested plot which offers a cyborg public security agent hunting down some unknown entity that's hacking into cyberized bodies and forcing them to carry out assassinations and other nefarious acts for political purposes. However, you'll stay watching for the underlying messages about the looming dangers of technology and the nature of identity. Okay, truth be told, you'll have no idea what's going on actually, but somehow that's kind of what makes the movie good. At number 14, I begrudgingly include Event Horizon on this list. 
The film is one of the best sci-fi horror films ever made. Discount Kevin Costner, Haunted Ship in Space, Experimental Gravity Drives, Morpheus, Gruesome Deaths, the film has a lot of really great elements from plot to characters. Now the reason I hate this film is because it's quite possible that no film has damaged me as much as Event Horizon has. I watched it way too young and no child should witness the horrors that it contains inside. I've actually never watched the film in full since I was a kid, and I look away as much as possible whenever I come upon its scenes, either for the sake of a video or just by chance. That's how traumatized I am by this movie, and yet I recognize its brilliance. At number 13, god I hate that number, another heresy coming your way with 1998's Small Soldiers. One part Halo and one part Indian in the cupboard, this film has tragically been somewhat lost to time. The best way to describe the film would be to say that it's as if Avatar and Toy Story had a baby. Despite the ludicrous plot pitch, the characters in the film, especially the toys, were colorful and full of life, helping the movie's plot to, surprisingly, tug at your heartstrings. Personally, my sympathies lie with the Gorgonites, but God, Chip Hazard was a masterful tactician. At number 12, we have Armageddon. This one falls under the category of science fiction disaster movies, along with such films as The Day After Tomorrow and The Rise of Skywalker. High fives! Armageddon is exactly what you think would happen if Michael Bay tried to make Apollo 13. Replace Bruce Willis with Tom Hanks, replace the moon with an asteroid, and replace well-developed humanized characters with simplistic badass heroes. I don't want the events in that movie to ever play out in real life, but I mean I can appreciate the beauty of humanity uniting against a giant rock hurtling towards Earth that on impact will initiate the apocalypse. Extinction level events suck, but they really bring out the best in people, even Ben Affleck. At number 11 I'm going with Judge Dredd, even if secretly I kind of want to put it higher. Judge Dredd is a film with a perfect dose of 90s campiness to go along with an action-fueled plot. What I've always felt is underrated about this movie is its world building. I know sometimes people say the special effects, set design, and costuming is a bit silly, but I actually think there's some good imagination in there. When dystopian movies become too restrained, what they gain in realism, they lose in fun. And Judge Dredd is a lot of fun. It's so rewatchable precisely because it's so enjoyably ridiculous, while still being put together competently enough to not be stupid or cringeworthy. At number 10, we have Independence Day, a pan-human jingoistic film in the same vein as Armageddon. Will Smith, of course, has an indelible place in 90s science fiction action films, adding personality and humor where before protagonists in such movies had been bland, brawny heroes offering up little more than quick one-line witticisms. Independence Day was perhaps the first true sci-fi action blockbuster, inspiring an age of big-budget films in the genre. At number 9, we finally get to Demolition Man. Yes, there were bigger films, yes, there were better films, but Demolition Man to me is what 90s sci-fi was all about. As I stated before, futuristic dystopian colorful setting, straightforward chiseled action hero, maniacal villain, and ridiculous plot. Like Judge Dredd, Demolition Man is a movie that never becomes tired and begs rewatching over and over again. At number 8, we have 12 Monkeys. One of the more critically acclaimed and well-respected science fiction films of the 90s, this Terry Gilliam classic sheds most of the camp and silliness of other sci-fi movies of the time, and instead mixes mystery and suspense into its story, thus making for a true sci-fi thriller that keeps you glued to the screen eagerly awaiting truths to be revealed from one scene to the next. I suppose on first watch I did find Brad Pitt's character to be a bit silly, but it's really grown on me over the years. At number 7, we have to get Jurassic Park in on this list. Now, people tend to look at Jurassic Park as different from other science fiction films in that dinosaurs are the enemy rather than aliens. However, if you think about it, dinosaurs are really just Steven Spielberg's take on xenomorphs. Though, we have to give Michael Crichton credit as well for writing the book which led to this blockbuster biopunk film, the echoes of which, even beyond the cinema, are omnipresent in American culture. At number 6, we have Men in Black. This movie has so many strong elements to it that I even think there's an argument to be made that it should be higher on this list. What's best about Men in Black is its premise, which is executed with so much thoughtfulness and imagination. What if aliens are already here, living all over the Earth in disguise and interacting with people on a daily basis? Additionally, the MIB takes sci-fi technology to a whole new level. Cars, ships, guns, and gadgets are perhaps what truly make the movie. Though it would be nothing without its dynamic characters, whether agents or aliens. 
At number five, this is where I have to put Starship Troopers. Now, if you asked me 20 years ago to make this list, it's possible that I put this film closer to 20 than one, but time has perhaps allowed it to appreciate more than any other science fiction film. At the time Starship Troopers came out, it seemed unnecessarily violent and campy to the point of no return. However, today, that's ironically exactly why I love the movie. The film is utterly quotable, funny, over the top, and irreverent in a way that proves a point about how stupid everything is. At number four, we have The Fifth Element. When it comes to world building, I'm not sure this film can be beat. Usually dystopian settings are enthralling from afar, but in actuality are places and times you'd rather not visit. Yet when it comes to the fifth element's dark future, well, for some reason I find it appealing to the point that I actually wouldn't mind checking it out in person. The characters in the movie are also unmatched in terms of their uniqueness and exaggerated traits, and both Lilu and Ruby are legends of science fiction. At number three, we have Total Recall. At one point, I actually put The Fifth Element in this spot as I struggled to decide which film should be higher. Both have amazing, futuristic, dystopian worlds and fantastic, unforgettable characters. Both movies feature an array of awesome, advanced technology, and so too are the plots of both equally engrossing. So why did I put Total Recall ahead of The Fifth Element? Well, in the end, I couldn't choose, so I simply asked myself the question, which film do you go back to and watch more? And it's definitely Total Recall, and I'm not sure exactly why, though perhaps it's the Arnold factor. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge Bruce Willis fan, and his films appear three times on this list, but there's just something so weird and yet fitting to the relationship between Arnold and science fiction. At number two, we have Terminator Judgment Day. This is where we get to the part of the list where the films discussed are not just the best sci-fi films in the 90s, but are widely considered some of the greatest films ever made, and Judgment Day certainly fits that bill. The classic sci-fi elements are there and executed well. Technology, time travel, androids, and apocalypse. Beyond that, the movie's chill-inducing thrills are one of a kind. The special effects are convincing and often emotionally devastating, and Arnold was never and has never been in a more perfect role for himself, save for his character in Junior. Finally, at number one, to me this isn't even up for debate, we have The Matrix. Listed at number 16 on IMDb's top 250 films of all time list, it's fitting that The Matrix came out at the end of the decade because it not only closed out the 90s on a high note, but it ushered in a new age of science fiction cinema, one in which audiences have a higher expectation of the films produced therein. The Matrix perfected the dystopian nightmare, introduced novel action sequences and fight choreography to the genre, threw in awe-inspiring special effects and CGI, and rounded it all out with iconic characters, whom people to this day still quote throughout pop culture and society in general. Its mind-bending story keeps us thinking and exploring into the future. Well, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what your list is, or tell me how wrong or right mine is. Um, remember to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and for now, my name is Merrick Ben. I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.